Hey, welcome to the Art Condition Podcast, a weekly show that will discuss the business, community, and often undiscussed stress and mental health concerns of being a professional artist or even a serious hobbyist. I'm Joby. I've been in the tattoo and illustration professions for 25 years. My co-host is Moose, a data analyst, social media manager, and art agent. If you enjoy the content, please consider visiting the Patreon page and the show notes to help support the effort. Or if that's not an option, please like, subscribe, leave a good review, or just share with your friends. And definitely go visit the links of our guests on this episode. Thanks for listening, and have a great day. Getting a love for all that stuff along the way. Yeah, it's all I stuff I should say for the regular conversation, huh? Well, then let's do <laughs> yeah. it. I'm turning off the uh, starting okay. soon, and we are okay. now live, 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 live. And so, welcome. And thank you, Mike and Peter, so much for being here. Um, there's one thing that I want to do uh, right off the bat that I like to do when there's somebody with us that whose work that I really admire is just fanboy for a minute, and then I can just like put it out there and forget about it. <laughs> Mike, huge mm -hmm. fan of your work, and oh, thanks, man. Really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to uh, join us and be here. Um, yeah. Peter, Peter, Thanks big fan me. of, big fan of yours as well. And so let's just jump right into Thank it you. and talk to us a little bit about who you guys are. Mike, you want to start, tell us about what you do and what brought you here today. Uh, okay. So I want to thank Moose. He's, he hit me up, uh, a while ago to invite me to take part in this. Uh, like he's always been a really amazing uh, resource. I, really can't shout out enough to him like he's been a an, a, an onst a constant like a like presence on different twitch channels supporting artists you yourself know that like um he's thrown me information on things that i have some like some passing interest in he'll like say hey here's a here's a big paper i wrote on that you know like he, he seriously gets into the, <laughs> the nitty-gritty of all that so i anyway that's how i kind of like tagged into you guys um moose is awesome I really appreciate it. So, um, yeah, right now I'm working as a concept artist for ZeniMax Online Studios. I've been there for 13 years. Um, I think I'm the oldest, in more ways than one, artist at <laughs> ZeniMax at Online Studios. Uh, I think I'm. I, I was. I was like. Uh, I was hired very early on. Um, the lead concept artist. And I were like, he started like two weeks before me. And then I was the first production artist. And I think, yeah, as far, yeah, as far as concept goes for sure. Like I'm the oldest guy there anyway, blah, 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 blah. So I've been there forever. And, um, before that I was a figure artist at Volition. And before that I was a character artist at other studios, um, and a lead texture artist is the seventh studio i've worked at and i've worked on like 16 published titles if you don't count the the updates that we do here at zenimax so like we come out with you know new content quite often we'll release a new game we're expanding constantly that sort of a thing anyway but yeah i love it um and i've and, and like I've, I've done a lot of work in the past for D and D and other publications. Uh, I stream, and and I have an, and I have a daughter who's an amazing artist too. By the way, I need to get her streaming too. She rocks. Side note: uh, Your daughter is actually uh, friends with uh, our friend Art of Blake. Yeah, yeah. Blake is. Uh, he's not the Blake that I, I'm thinking of. Art of Blake. Uh, Blake Davis. Is he a younger guy? Blake Davis. Okay. Yeah, because I went to school with the Blake, but I don't think it's the same guy. Yeah, I think we talked about this, but again, I have a horrible memory. <laughs> uh, Art Mike, of Blake. That's cool. Mike, forgive me if I've done this. Have I misattributed your uh, your position? I I listed you as lead concept. Are you? No, are you, I'm not lead. Not lead. Okay. Nope. I'm a, I'm, a re I'm a regular concept artist at work. Well, I'll correct the record right here. Not lead, but still badass. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. We yeah, still like or, or we can promote, or we can give them the promotion right here, right now. Yeah. We, oh, thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, I'll pass the, it on to the my... check is The check is in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> Let my, I'll tell my lead. It'll be like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. 
All right. I'll go uh, talk to CJ about this right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Just a, just a regular concept artist. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Um, Peter, same question. Tell us about yourself, a little bit of a background and what, what brings you here today? Uh, sure. So uh, I'm Peter. I am currently just a regular old freelancer. Uh, I do character and creature designs for uh, Dungeons and Dragons, for just people's projects. Um, I mostly work with small time individual clients. Um, and yeah, I've always, I w always wanted to be a concept artist. I mean, I guess that's a lot of people, but I went to the art Institute of California in Santa Monica and, uh, <clears throat> I got a, a bachelor's in media arts and animation there. And, uh, while I was there, I would did a lot of, you know, small projects with, uh, friends and stuff. And I had a lot of crossover with the game dev department also. So I got interested in game development and concept art through, through that program. Um, and it was fun, you know, we've worked on a lot of cool projects, but only in the last maybe five years, I'd say my art has actually gotten to that kind of professional feeling level. I still don't think I'm that great, but it's definitely an improvement from where I was after school. You know, my my college portfolio, you look back and it's like, ew, it's just, it's kind of cringe. But, but yeah, so now, uh, so now I'm just freelancing uh, on the side. I'm going to, I'm going to school for a second degree after my art school went through all sorts of scandal and my campus closed. <laughs> so that degree is basically worthless. So I'm getting a second degree just to have the second degree. So I'm in the middle of that right now, but still doing a lot of art commissions and stuff. So, yeah. Well, Peter, may you never be cursed uh, with the blindness of thinking that your art is that great. <laughs> <laughs> may, may it's we, okay. I, may, I know may, where I'm at. I know where I'm we at. all have some level of insecurity about our our own work. Oh yeah. <laughs> Are you really an artist if you're not insecure about your art? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. And once you, I think if you feel like you've arrived, you're you're the furthest from it. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> um. So. I, I want to lead with a uh, question sort of of clarification, because this is uh, one thing that you see misunderstood more often than not, it seems like. Um, and, and I kind of wonder why that is, but it, it seems perfect to start a conversation about concept art with a question of what is concept art and how does it differentiate itself from illustration? Uh, that's for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like for me, it's just, um, concept art is just, it's what you have to deliver in order to inform the next guy to build it, you know, or animate it or whatever. Uh, like we inform, um, the modelers for like, uh, for fixture or for the world building for, um, you know, characters and all that sort of stuff, all, all the, all the figure artists and, and, uh, I'll even do icons and things. Um, so all we're doing is just like providing them information where somebody can like model an idea, a concept artist, um, typically will, will get a design document from, um, uh, a designer and we will, uh, work with the art director and the art lead to uh, determine what is the best design. And then uh, once that is approved um, and the designer is, usually the designer is happy, uh, we pass that on and then the art director works with whoever else, you know, has to take it from there to build it or whatever. And so that's a concept artist. Illustration obviously is make a very, and concept can make, you, you make pretty pictures, but it's not about pretty pictures. It's about 
it's you're the blueprint guy, you know, but you want to also provide uh, reference to here's what the textures would look like. Here's what you know. These are the materials that it's made out of. Uh, it should be this scale. That's a huge one. You know, like how does it fit in the world? Is it going to be something a guy can hold? Is it something that a guy can ride in or whatever? And um, uh, yeah. So I don't know. Lost my train of thought, but no, it's all good. Is there is it, where in the in the pipeline, so to speak, is concept art? Like what what level do you come in at in terms of informing? Early. Or, yeah like are you just are, yeah. like basement level early like what 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 are you taking in when you're coming up with ideas for what things are going to look like where are you getting your information from so basically just those designers like uh like so okay so for example when they were forming our studio uh i heard i learned about the studio being being formed because uh, a guy I used to work with rich Lam i still work with him rich lambert he's our creative director uh he and i worked together at 2015 in oklahoma uh he, rem he remembered me for my art and he was brought in uh when the studio was forming uh so when <clears throat> just to give you an idea of how early concept gets in it was like they had a few programmers there and then they wanted concept in, you know, so we were there to establish the look of the game. So we're, we're early on, um, you know, and we went through a bunch of different stuff. We had an R and D phase that lasted quite a while. And so we do a lot of that kind of a thing and then we'll kind of bring in others, but like the UI department didn't come in for a long time. And I was actually the first UI artist. Uh, it was probably like two years in or something, you know, a lot of games have a quicker turnaround. But ours is obviously a, a pretty massive game, and they want to make sure everything's good to go. And I've done a lot of UI stuff, so I did, I, I've done a lot of icons and things. So I actually stepped into the UI role for a while. Um, but literally, you you get a team that is that says, "Okay, we need to develop a new area. Um, let's make a new area with werewolves that are undead that uh, tear up a town." Um, so let's make a request for the werewolf design, the undead werewolf design, uh, what the town looks like, what does the furniture look like? What do the people look like? What's their, you know, what's their, what's their, you know, they work out the story of everything. Uh, what does their transportation look like? What are they farmers or do they live in the swamp, you know, whatever. And so we are the next step. And so we will put together a sheet. Um, I did a lot of stuff, for example, the Argonians who are a mud dwelling people, like, you know, speaking of swamps, right? So I had a giant sheet full of uh, what, what kind of stuff, what kind of artifacts do they have around? Um, what do they cook on? What do their chairs look like, literally? What do their houses look like? And so I would, I would do a lineup of each one of these things. and you know, literally chimes, I think wind chimes of like bones clinking together or something like that. You know, you just, you just do a whole bunch of things. And so concept is there very early on to inform that sort of stuff. And then once that gets approved, then it's the next person builds it and we put it in game, try it out. And then, you know, if it sticks, it sticks. But again, it's iter it's iterative. And a lot of that stuff was early on and got reinvented 14 times, but we're still very much early on in the process and I believe always will be. Concept art is considered pre-production, isn't it? In most cases. Yeah. yeah. We also do a lot of, yeah. And also, uh, I think that the nature of the role also kind of lends itself well to, um, not just pre-production, but also like player facing stuff. Like I literally do a lot of icons I've done. There's like a, there's a loot crate system in our game. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of games have loot crate systems now. Uh, and I design a lot of those. I think I was the first guy to do it for our game, but like we but basically, you know, card backs and loot crates. Um, and uh, we help out a lot of marketing related stuff. A lot of it, a lot of it is just design like, uh, like, 
I designed mounts that became built and put in the game, but I also like uh, designed like uh, things like the like the monetization part of our game. Like I I I I designed the coins that are in our game. You know, so you see them up on the web store. Like that's art that I've actually done that's in the game. You know, it's not just concept. Like you're just a step in the process. That's what it is most of the time. But there's a lot of yeah, pre-production is a big part of it, but it's also like not just the only aspect of it. There's a lot of other roles that concept kind of plays in the process. Yeah. From what I understand, it's like once the concept phase of stuff is done, they kind of move the artists onto other stuff like UI and like like marketing, like you said. Like just you gotta use your resources at the company, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, there's, concept plays a lot of different, has, wears different hats, but they do, and obviously, like, the the, the gaming, uh, like, the dev world has definitely shifted a lot since when I first started. Like, I started in a smaller studio where each each artist wore a bunch of different hats. Like, I was a concept artist, modeler, UI artist animator all on one game you know and um now it's like i i'm a concept artist and maybe i do a few of these other things but there are dedicated figure artists who make armor you know they're dedicated figure artists who whatever work on monsters or something do you think that uh having an additional skill set is a bonus when you're looking for employment in uh concept art or is it at the point where Oh, um, you cut out. Yeah, um, I'll answer the question as that yeah, this like happens sometimes. <laughs> sure. I mean, I yeah, I can I can kind of see where he's going with that. Oh, he's coming back already. Um, yeah. Yay! Do you want to? You want to? Once you get video going, do you want to ask the question again, or do you want me to? I think it was a really short one. Yeah, it was basically: yeah. is it a, a benefit, or do uh, they already have these specialized roles? Uh, that it makes it irrelevant what extra extra skill set you have. No, um, it's always relevant. I would say that like uh, extra skills are usually a huge bonus. And I mean, if you're if you're a good artist, if you if you're a, if you're a problem solver, that's going to be the number one thing, right? If you're if you're good at like throwing out really good ideas, and then if you're also not only that. If you if you have, it's not even about tough skin. I used to think that like, there's artists who are. This is kind of a side, but like an aside. But like you know how artists get really precious about their stuff. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. there's a tendency. There was a time where like, uh, especially in games, like I'd work on things for weeks and months, and then it and then it got thrown out or somebody else took over and redid it or something, you know, and that was really difficult. And so there's that, but then you realize that it's all part of the production. It's not really your art. It's like, it belongs to the, you know, it, it, and, and at the end of the day, usually when it's changed, it's for the better. Even if you don't agree with it, it's like, it's not your decision, you know, but with concept, you're literally producing a lineup of things. So if I put up six things, I know that they're throwing away, you know, 80% of what you're done. You're like, you know, you're walking into it like that, or they don't like any of them and start over again or completely a different direction. So uh, if you can if you can offset that with other skills, uh, like if you have experience with 3D, um, that's definitely, you know, those are bonuses. But like if it's something where you feel like um, if you're good at concept and problem solving, you can always, um, I, I think, most, if not all, studios <clears throat> would allow you to um, pick up and learn something where you think it could boost your value. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice. Because um, it's in their best interest. It's like, you know, if I, like, I'm at a point where I can choose to, to be a dedicated, uh, I, I, I could really ramp up my strengths in either figure or in, um, environment and uh if i if i wanted to uh be a bigger better figure artist i could 
I could, you know, take an, an anatomy course and the company would probably help me out with that. Oh. Or I could, uh, uh, be a, you know, take, take on more environment kind of related tasks and like, again, get some sort of like additional education there. And like, uh, they'd help me with, uh, learning more 3d software to help me out, you know, but usually you're, you're among peers, you know, before COVID, obviously, like you, you could just walk over to a, another dude's desk and ask him what he thinks you could be doing better. It's a really, you know, it's not like, it's not like you have to reach the, some kind of level of perfection and, and then you're unstoppable from there on out. It's like everybody, I think at every job walks in with some good and some bad and you have to, um, you have to improve what's bad, you know? And usually yeah. studios will work with you and, and it's not like they look at you and see your potential and hire you. It's not that because <laughs> I think a lot of artists have that delusion. <laughs> uh, you know, they think, Hey, look at my stuff. It's like, no, what you have right now should line, you should be able to line up like other artists that, you know, you, that are earning the income that you're looking to get, you know, the role that you're supposed to fill, like, you know, you should be able to line up with them. But uh, if you're not that great, if you're really good at figures and you're not that great at environments and you are going to work at a studio that really needs somebody to uh, work in environments, you probably could teach yourself to do that if, if you're willing to, you know, because to be honest, concept is one of those things where a lot of people want to do it. And a lot of people want to not just do concept. They only want to do monsters mm -hmm. and they're only willing to draw monsters from the front or, you know what I mean? It's there's a the bizarro thing. Anyway, I'm talking a lot, but yeah, I have these giant long story freaking epic talk, uh, answers to questions. That's, that's awesome. No, that's great. <laughs> I think I think like at the end of the day, concept art is just <clears throat> another job, right? And you have to kind of <clears throat> you have to kind of uh, dissociate your yourself from your art because the art is just is the job part and. And I think it's hard for a lot of people because, like, when you're an artist, you pour a lot of yourself into your work, right? So it's, like, personal. But mm -hmm. because concept art is it's literally a job, you have to not get uh, too personal about it. So, I would you're, so like, it's like your, your tough skin thing. Like, you hear that a lot in art school. It's like, oh, you got to grow a tough skin. It's like, it's like yeah, you got to. I, I think that's true in a sense where you have to like kind of remove the emotion from how you the feel ego. about your art. Yeah. 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 I think uh it's always a good idea to take pride in what you do. Hundred percent. Do 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 everything with the intention of this is gonna be the one that they pick and it's gonna stick. You know, but also be willing to just throw it away. Like I think that's that's one of those things I think uh, every artist has probably heard if they've had a decent teacher, the whole kill your, like be able to kill your darlings or whatever. Yeah, kill um, your babies. Or Yeah. Who, who and said that? It's true. It's like, I don't know, <laughs> somebody totally super smart. <laughs> right. But I actually, I really, uh, yeah, I totally believe in it. And I've had, yeah, I, I actually, you know, I'm really proud of a lot of stuff that I've done in the past. But like, I, if it burns, I, I mean, it, that's too bad, but I don't really care, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I, yeah. I know I could do it again and I, and I know I, and I know I could do it better. Uh, so yeah. And, and when I, uh, so it's, it is like, I've, I heard some other saying, which is like that, which is whether you're making movies or digging ditches, you know, at, at some point it becomes a job, you know, and so it's true, you know, it, at some point it's a job. However, um, I really get into almost everything that I do. I really, you know, I have a lot of fun with it. And like, I, I show stuff, I show stuff, uh, for that. I want my, my, my lead and my art director. I want them to really like every option, which means I'm not just throwing a bunch of crap out there and then finding something redeeming in one of them 
you know, because mm-hmm. like, th- and that happens sometimes. I, I was in a rush once and I was doing, uh, you know, I, I did some mounts that, uh, that had to be like ready in, in like an hour or something like that. And they looked, they were terrible because I was just overlaying like, you know, stained glass over a horse or something like that. To, <laughs> and it was just, I could, I was fighting it the whole time. And, you know, the time came up and luckily they went in a different direction, but usually it's like you're, you really, you really problem solve. You really think like, how can I make this look cool? Most of the stuff we do, we've done a million times. So we have a really good idea of the expectation. Um, you know, so I know it's expected of me and I know that a lot of the stuff I do is lore driven so I can research it. And that's actually really important for all concept artists is to like research their, their stuff. They, uh, like some of the best interviews we've seen is people who do environments where they say, yeah, I've, I'm like mixing this kind of Byzantine Asian sort of, you know, architecture in. Um, you know, I, I, I'm imagining these people as coming from like the cliffs of wherever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they have this kind of story behind it and, and you don't have to understand the story when you're looking at it. But when, when you sit down with somebody and they show you an interesting piece of, of architecture or an environment, and then when they explain their thought process, that is really valuable to an art director they want to hear your thought they don't want they don't want to look at something and, and and see somebody who just copied somebody else's whatever or we're able to pull their perspective together on a bad idea you know it sounds like uh it sounds like world building too yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh, yeah uh, everything's world building i mean like yeah yeah that's what i'm doing really right mm-hmm. Um, trying to yeah. Shane in the chat filled us in that uh, kill your darling kill your darlings comes from Faulkner. So thank okay. you, Shane. Um, thank you for being an awesome historian. He is actually a, a, a history professor, so that that helps to have him. Around. Oh, cool. He also suggested it would probably be. Uh, it sounds like a concept artist might need a historian around for consultation. So um, shout out to all the historians um, and aspiring concept artists. Call up your your local university and talk to the historians. Um, my friend Bronchula in the chat had a good question too. Is it better for a professional concept artist to be all around or to be an expert in either character or environment? Um, all around is very valuable, but they definitely there are definitely um, roles out there for someone who is very much better at one versus the other. Um, I mean, I, I work with guys who are excellent at, at almost everything. I think that obviously your, your value is going to increase if you can, if you can solve, um, like whatever problems in, is put in front of you. I also kind of wanted to throw something out there that like, speaking of history, that some of the best concept artists I've worked with are really smart guys really know their history. There's one guy I worked with who we would just be having a conversation at his desk and he'd just go to the whiteboard and he's like, do you remember the, uh, whatever the Texaco logo? And I'm like, kind of. And then he would just draw it perfectly. And he's like, I always liked this, you know? And then he would, and he would draw things that he liked throughout his life. And he just has this, I don't have a good memory, but, uh, him and this other guy that I still work with, they really know their history like and so that's huge um we're we're constantly having to fill a very huge complex world with stuff that hasn't already been that doesn't exist in lord of the rings that doesn't exist in whatever universe you know and in 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 a lot of cases doesn't exist in our own universe and so really knowing you know, the history of the world, um, you know, like what are the catacombs of these, this crazy um, ancient part of the world look like that, you know, nobody's ever seen before today. Like, you know, there are so many things like that 
that like um, a concept artist can bring to bear that like really makes people excited about, you know, like really turns heads from the art director. It's like, oh man, that is so cool. Like, you know, they, uh, I'm saying, you know, a lot. The, um, the architect, there's, there's stuff I can't talk about that I wish I could, but you know, like some, 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 um, amazing uh, educational building, you know, of old, like, here's the construct of it. Um, look how cool it looks. Look how cool the lighting works in it. That sort of a thing. It can inform a design that, that we now integrate into, uh, part of our world, or at least it's like a springboard for, you know, really good ideas. And so, yeah, historians are really huge. Sorry. That's another giant. Would well, you say then diversion? To, would you say oh. to just have a large? You have to have a a good visual library, right? And how do you get that? How do you add to that library? Well, you gotta like, you gotta research. You read. You 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 learn about stuff you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Like I uh, I took an anthropology class a couple semesters ago, and that really sparked like just interest in you know a bunch of different cultures and how you can take little bits from all the all these different cultures around the world and work them into your into your world right mm -hmm. so like you know from that class i i started doing uh like a polynesian islander orc designs and stuff and like how do you kind of step away from the traditional uh viking style orcs and into something a little different right mm -hmm. so i think i think it's it's having a large visual library and then also being able to kind of mix and match different things to create stuff that people haven't really seen before or thought about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I heard a, yeah, so, so, yeah. an interesting idea uh, a long time ago. I, I can't, I want to say it was like Bobby Chu maybe said like, if you're, if you're designing a tree, look at sea creatures. You know, then that's like sort of like it, like the, the point was to be like, not literally, but the point is to be like, you it break yourself out of the, um, the expected parameters, you know, the, the sort of Promethean tree, just get out of that immediately into something that's like almost totally unrelated. And that will start help you start shaking out kind of new and original things that you wouldn't have otherwise thought about. Um, and this is, yeah, this is like actually a, uh, a specific question that I had a little bit further down, but um, we could jump right to it to kind of explore this a, a little bit further um, as a particular question, uh, Mike, for you, like wh what, what do you have to say about filling up the idea bank? Like what are your tips and tricks and, you know, your, your kind of like go-tos for enriching that vault of concepts? Uh, the very first thing that we do when we get an assignment almost without almost without exception is gathering reference um what i think that um there there might be a misconception also concept artists are just you know you're talking um about like uh peter was talking about uh having a visual library which is true but also some of us, you know, I'm not like, uh, I'm not one of those guys who, I have a visual library, I guess. Um, but I, I'm not one of those guys like, uh, who's that freaking insane artist who can like draw anything from memory pretty much, Kim, you know? Kim, Kim Jong-Ji. Jong Kim Jong-Ji, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, and you knew exactly what I was talking about. Because like, <laughs> like he's that, the one that, that does that, it. That just yeah. goes to show that, yeah, there's not that many people can do it. And then my, my friend, I was telling you just earlier about the Texaco thing. Like he's he's kind of like that dude, but he was actually blown away by Kim Jong. Like when I showed him a video, he's like, "Yeah, I hate this guy." You know, as soon as I showed it to him. Uh, but like I, you you get you get the best stuff, your 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 best ideas from just doing a freaking Google image search. <laughs> you know, you like you get out there, and it's then you hear. get you get a. You, you guys have probably heard this a lot by now, but you get Pure F. I have it open right now. I can never remember the names of things, but Pure oh, yeah. F. Pure F is legit. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's free. You know, mm -hmm. you, it, you, it's just, and it's, it's, it sounds dumb, but it's 
it's amazing. It's uh, when I say dumb, it sounds like too simple to like actually have value, but it's just a place to throw a bunch of photos mm -hmm. and uh, you can, you can scale them up, down, you can rotate them. Uh, it, it'll, you can quickly organize them. Like it, it, it's just this software where you can just fill a screen full of photos that you can reference um, for whatever project. And then you would have, you would have, a canvas full of these photos for each thing you're working on. So yeah, if, if somebody asks you, Hey, can you design like some kind of a monolithic, uh, like, you know, structure made out of like ebony or whatever, you know, or, you know, ebony and, you know, some other elements and it's designed by vampires or whatever right mm -hmm. so you do this you do this research on ebony on architecture like you know something medieval that's gothic and you know so all of a sudden you're instead of you come trying to come up with something you've just pictured in your head and being frustrated you actually have a bunch of visual um data in front of you to like just pull from where all they all they need to do is spark a direction they don't you don't have to like pull there's a lot of one for one stuff that we do or like you'll, I design, I, I do a lot of mount, um, uh, like fur patterns, you know, it's like, okay, so you can ride a large cat. Uh, now what he's Brown. Okay. How about, how about now he's black and white and then, you know, okay, now he's spotted and striped. Then what beyond that? You start making things up, you start making it look like a cartoon, you know, if it comes out of your head. So you 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 pull up animal patterns from like from all kinds of animals, like those weird giraffe things that I can't think of the name of them, but you know, they have there are there are creatures that like you don't know exist, or there are creatures that you do know exist, but you can like you can do a search for like interesting cat fur and come up with a bunch of stuff that you'd never seen before. And then all of a sudden you have this giant library of really cool things to throw on whatever. And then that translates to all sorts of stuff. You know, you, you could like have a, a home project where you, you've designed a character who has a pouch and you want it to be this cool, something special, you know, like made, it's made out of like something that means something to the character, you know, like there's, you can put a story behind it and then you now have compiled a bunch of reference that that can inform a really cool thing instead of you just having to like scribble 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 oh this is a cool shape here's the story behind that in my head but it's actually really boring when i look at it do you know what i mean but when you when you have reference it it, inf it, it looks legit and it's interesting <laughs> i'm losing you guys <laughs> i think as long as it looks plausible right i i think yeah plausibility yeah i really like the word plausible because it's, it's not necessarily uh realistic but it could be mm -hmm. that's i think that's yep i'm yeah. working on one right now it's it's a woman who was inspired by i was at a birthday party for a one-year-old and i was looking for something else to draw and there's the grandmother was there and she was the coolest craziest looking thing ever and she looked like a giant owl like she had this weird scarf she had this, this impossibly large hair that would come up over her shoulders and I started designing a new character based on her, you know, and then I thought, what if she was, you know, what if she was, her costume was, um, like in, in place of a backpack and everything, maybe she, like, maybe her armor and her, co like everything she wears is actually sustainable life. Like she could have, you know, she could have different kinds of nuts and fruits that are actually her clothes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Seeds that she can eat or plant just stuff like that. And so like now there's this, I research it and to make it look plausible. I have to reference actual nuts. And then you find out that like, there are some really cool giant, like African nuts that people um, do sculptures out of. And so there's this rich and, and they have these amazing textures and colors and everything. And so there's, there's just a lot out there you can just play with. So now that you have this really cool idea, um, does the quality of the artwork make a difference, or is it just 
putting down the art and uh, making it readable to somebody? Or does like line weight and uh, proper values and all that stuff come into a, uh, into account as well? Yeah, or or rendering to some degree or yeah, uh, a lot of what we do. I've worked on different games that like where it means more or less depending on what you're you know doing. But like we definitely try to deliver things that look pretty much like uh, what the end product should look like. Um, also, because a lot of what we do ends up in an art book, mm. an art of book, you know, or some of it does. And so there's there's a quality there that you don't want to skimp on. Um, but for the most part, again, concept is, yeah, like, it's literally just by definition, you're just, you're just coming up with it. You're coming up with a concept, you know, you're, you're literally just figuring out what needs to be done. So you don't have to like render everything out. I have actually done, there are some jobs where it's like, okay, look, we have like six things we got to get through this week. Um, just do, just do line art, like design a box, you know, based on, so I would literally, I I've had concepts where I'm like, here's a treasure chest, right? Here's, um, here's an existing treasure chest. And then I Photoshop it so that like, instead of it being around, I'll make a peak or something. I'll change, I'll, I'll, and then I'll, I'll take an arrow from a different type of latch and I'll point it to like where the, where the other latch is. And I say, replace it with this latch, replace the texture that's on it from steel to this leather, you know? So I'll just like kind of, I'll just circle around where things go. And that, and then pass it off, and then they say, "Okay, I got it," and then they can just build it from that, you know. So that can happen under a under like a crunch, but typically you want to answer every possible. Not always. A lot of a lot. Uh, you want to answer as many possible questions ahead of time so that you're not wasting time for production. But you always keep in mind that. Um, the artist building the thing and texturing it has a lot of sense of pride as well. And so like, they'll definitely want to infuse their own like voice, you know, on the project, on the product. But like, I've, I've done a lot of, I've done a lot of designs. I did a lot of the music boxes for our game, for example, where like, I thought I was overworking it to the point where I was taking a lot of that kind of creative joy from the next guy. But they totally take it and make it their own, and it's mm -hmm. so much better than if I, I what I drew was what I imagined I would have built. I would have built, but what they build is so much better. But like it, it's 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 what I did, and it's so freaking cool what they ended up doing with it. And they'll put like a so they'll put a spin on it. So speaking you know, to oh sorry, go ahead. Legit. No, you're good. I'm done. Well, speaking to that idea of, you know, wanting to achieve a certain quality or, you know, having like a working knowledge of the things that you are going to be designing, uh, what would you say aspiring concept artists should be spending, you know, a, a large, the lion's share of their studies and their training? And, you know, what are the best ways for them to go about, you know, learning design and shape language and all of the elements that are important to concept art? Yeah. Um, so there's some of the big obvious ones, like um, having a good sense of structure. Like a good sense of design is 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 one of those fundamental things that's just gonna it's gonna eke its way into everything you do. One of the most valuable lessons I ever had in college that I think about like often. Like I thought about it last week when I was working on a concept is being able to simplify something down. I remember having to do a drawing. We did a fig, there was a, there was a figure drawing class I was in a part of where the teacher said, okay, you're, you're allowed 20 lines, you know, to do this figure drawing, 20. And they have to be straight lines. It's point A to point B, you know what I mean? Communicate. <laughs> awesome. Then it was like, now you're allowed nine lines, you know? And so it was like, what are the most, imp like the absolute most important lines you know or shapes or whatever and so it's you 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 build a skill of throwing away the unnecessary and focusing mm -hmm. on what's the most important thing so that's fundament that's fundamental right that's going to transcend most things so obviously um that's going to be huge uh i'm trying to remember your your whole question though 
Um, crap. What um, skills uh, would be ideal for someone to train if they wanted to get into concept art? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so anatomy obviously is a big one. Um, but the problem solving, right? Like one of the skills that I learned on the job was working with um, our lead figure artist, Tatiana, who really under like she really understands she knows clothing inside and out like she totally can make she makes costumes all the time she she posted all the time on her on her facebook and instagram she's amazing right uh she makes her own jewelry and everything so just really understanding things like um that's a huge skill is just understanding fabric uh understanding um how uh so when i say fabric i mean like literally how is it sewn together uh that that's one aspect of it that just can inform so like you're talking about a visual library like there's a there's an educational library where like how do buckles work why would you buckle something this way instead of you're throwing down a bunch of random buckles because they look cool what's their functionality functionality is like top tier you know what i mean then you can decorate it and make a michael jackson jacket you know like it literally has to Jackson's jacket looks like a jacket. Then it's full of belts. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but some people design some, some concept artists literally are like, you know, comic book artists, even they'll just throw in a bunch of stuff that really is unnecessary. It doesn't form, it doesn't serve a function. So function is huge. So that's one of the biggest things. Um, just understanding the function of something. Why, why are they wearing this? Why is the architecture designed like this? What's the religious intent? You know, what's the culture? Maybe, maybe there's a triangle present in everything in the architecture because like the triangle is like the motif of the God that they worship in their culture. You know, we were talking like, earlier about uh, uh, history. Uh, yeah. His history is basically the, the solutions that previous people had to their problems. Yeah. And I'm 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 constantly going off on tangents, but it's like I have a really hard time saying what's the what's the most important thing. But like, or maybe yeah, not, the problem you know, solving the, the most, like, you know, but like the 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 general area of importance. You know, like, yeah, like yeah. When you like yeah, when you yeah, were uh, when you were studying, or you know, when you were you know making the the push to get to the point where you were going to be a you know a professional level. What what kind of things were you? doing just in terms from like a technique level uh what kind of things were you focusing on and working on um i think that one of the most important things that i had to learn was and i still struggle with it today i mean i still i still have to remind myself to do it today is to stop thinking in terms of like solving the problem and then putting it down like being able to just freely add an art lead who would literally take a like a photo or a rendering of a character or whatever to say a character and he would just get a yellow he just pick yellow with with the a, a fully opaque brush and then just sketch in like what do you think about like what if the hat did this what if you think what if the belts kind of like wrapped around here or in you know we're creating we're creating puzzles in the in the environment you know like what if a chain came down like this and it's red line he would call it red line drawings uh there would be a cage over here and he wouldn't render out anything i think one of the biggest skills is just like the problem solving aspect without getting into the nitty gritty like a lot of a lot of artists what they do in their process is what you should do in concept, which is like, just rough it, just go, just go loose. Like, just don't worry about the final thing. I was, I've, I've, I constantly, I had an, I have another, com, uh, another, uh, concept artist at work who makes fun of me because, uh, he says, I'm trying to like solve the design while I'm drawing the final design, <laughs> you know? And he's and he's like, dude, you're wasting so much time. He's like, just freaking draw it with like, draw messy lines, and then put it at you know, fifty percent opacity, and then draw over it. Like, I I literally have to be reminded of doing that. That's actually a huge. That's a skill that when I was starting to, 
uh, like to become new when I was new at the concept team, coming from an illustration background, for sure. I had to forget illustration and do problem solving. That's a big skill for me. That's that that was at the forefront of my thought. So I don't know if that's going to be true for everybody. You know, because you do have to understand how to render things and you know, understand material callouts, you know, things are made of metal and like you you, sh you should be able to, you should be able to look like if somebody asks you to design a cabinet, don't get bored. Don't I don't want to draw I don't design a cabinet. It's not what I'm about. I want characters. It's like, no, you have to understand that kind of stuff because it's going to translate everything. Okay, now what kind of a trim does it have? Are the are the handles on it brass or metal or whatever? Or are they just going to be wood? What's you know, what is it? What is this cabinet going to look like from uh, from people who are wealthy, people who have a middle income, or people who are poor? But they all want it. But they all take the same pride. They come from the same culture. So there's going to be some kind of a similar motif. That that goes back to the history thing. But that is ever present in like a game like ours. There there there's something that ties them all together. So there's going to be some sort of an element like a leaf design. It's going to be, you're, it's going to be like roughly carved in the poor people's thing, uh, or not at all, but like just inferred basically in the shape. This, the the middle class they they put a little money into it, so somebody sculpted in a nice little leaf, and then the rich people are like have fun. They've got like they've got like uh, the leaf, um, you know, uh, like worked in. What is it called? Like you know the metal. And engraved, engraved. Something. yeah and the, yeah whatever but like it's but they're all effectively the same chair they just have different levels of um fancy or what workmanship you know like they were one one guy was able to build it in his garage and then the king was able to like enlist you know craftsmen like 20 craftsmen dedicated to this one chair one guy worked on the the handles, you know, but they all had to work together. And, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, just being able to just think about things like that, and not just think about them, but like to work them out. Cause that's a big part of, of what we do also is there's always like a, a low medium and, and fancy version of things, or there's a light armor, a medium level armor, and there's like a heavy duty armor. You know, and they all share a motif. They all share uh, a background. It's similar. They all should look cool, but one should look pretty awesome. And then there's usually, and then there's usually an epic. You know, so a lot of people, I think, they're trying to like come up with a cool character. But what if this character didn't have as much money, or what if he had untold amounts of money that he could, you know, get whatever he wanted, or what if, you know, what what is this? What does this costume tell the story of him about or her? You know, would you say that like volume of ideas? is an important thing to work on just no. being able to spit out a bunch of different things oh um no i volume volume it's quality versus quantity is always going to be a thing you know if you if you throw out 90 percent crap and then maybe there's 10 percent redeemable stuff in there like it's going to be exhausting for somebody to look at all the crap you know what i mean so just like it's literally um one of the concept artists i work for like work with he just he just says i just i just do six designs that's it like you know like that's his that's his top number and it's usually you know usually three is you know you you, you want to give um almost anything that almost anything that we're, i'm given i try to do a ridiculous version of an oversimplified version of and somewhere in between because uh sometimes the art director really wants the over the ridiculous version the um the spider in lord of the rings did you ever see the behind the scenes of that thing yeah or, I did, where I they were well they the does the guys making this the creature they kept you know he's like he wants this really freaky spider head and so they 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 worked on it and they would show him he's like nah you like you need you know push it further and so they would like they would like push this this uh the tumor on the spider's head or something like more and more you know and he's like and he would keep coming back and say you know do it further and so they they would they keep giving him like you know three or four options to choose from and then they just out of like 
just for the hell of it, they made one ridiculous, huge, over the top one. He's like, "Yes, that one!" You know, as soon as he saw it. <laughs> so it's like, if they had just done a ridiculous, spectacular version, and then somewhere in the between, and somewhere, the, you know what I mean? Then they would have saved a lot of time. And so but, those are things, and and at least those are both starting. Those are all starting points. Even if even if not one of the designs are chosen, anything you draw is uh, a springboard for the conversation. Even if it doesn't, you know, a lot of the time you'll do some. Most most concepts reviews that I'm a part of, uh, somebody will put something in front of him. Where he's like, "Oh man, that's awesome!" And he goes, "But it, and, and even and it doesn't even have to have the intent. It doesn't even have to uh, come across the intended way." But the art director might see something in it that is new and cool. He's like, yeah, that shape here. It's like, again, Lord of the Rings. Uh, Alan, um, what's his name? Guy, I can't believe I can't think of his name. But the, the lead artist. Alan Watts? Alan. No, not Alan Watts. What's his name? Uh, Alan. John, John Holmes and Alan. Uh... Dude, I have, I freaking met him. I can't think of his name. <laughs> I know who you're anyway. talking about. Alan Lee, yeah. Alan Lee, Alan Lee, yeah, Alan Lee. Uh, he was doing sketches of the White Castle, and he was like doing the little buildings in there. And he did a sign just kind of hanging off of one of the buildings, and he just drew this like kind of quick shape on it. And somebody said it looked like a rat, and they just they thought, yeah, it would be kind of like there would be like in a in a in an environment like this, they would there could be a business that is just, you know, to catch and get rid of rats. Like there might be a lot of rats here. And so they, like when they made the the film, they actually made a really cool sign that, you know, that you'd see just kind of like a snapshot of in passing of, of like the sign that was like a rat catcher, you know, it's, it's just some random, he just did a scribble, but like it, they interpreted it as something cool. And, and then it, like it was a springboard for an actual design. So like that happens all the time at work. You don't have to like, you don't have to magically have all the answers, you know, what you do is, is valuable. Even if it, even if it touches on something that can then become something cooler. I want to roll back just a little bit to what you said about uh, the extreme version, the simple version and the, and the middle version. Would that be a, a, a good way to go about putting together a portfolio for yeah. a concept art gig? Sure. Yeah. 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 Male, male and female, you know, every, almost everything, Thing that we do especially when it not almost i think everything once we resolve if we design an armor for example for a male we have to resolve it for the female you know the torsos are totally different usually usually everything else can fit but yeah we have to do uh we have to do concepts for the female um and then um yeah and then light medium and heavy armor always but like there we do a lot of headdresses you know what is something what is something that uh people are willing to pay $5 for versus $10 versus $50 or whatever i mean i just made those numbers up but you get what i mean yeah um and microtransactions uh, <laughs> yeah exactly but like that's the thing is that like there's there's like value um like you can you can have you can have a mount that is that is a different color that's like a color shift that is unique that that actually has value or you could have a mount that is a specialized like super fancy design that has like all these glowing effects coming off of it that has you know value but like they each they all have a place in a game and they all have a place in like a story of in a game or anything like you know you could literally be designing films like a culture if you're designing if you're doing a comic book you know and then you make up you make up a, you make up a, a a universe or a an environment where you have a kingdom or whatever and stars you know are the motif you, you 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 know here's here's the guy who wants to like work you know go live in the kingdom like his furniture is going to have a star on it but so is the king's throne that's just going back to the previous thing but like 
the middle class are going to have the stars and you know and so uh that's the story it's like everybody there's a reason behind all of that and so that has value and when you when you draw if you're a concept artist if you're trying to be a concept artist and you go to talk to somebody and you and you show them that you put that thought into it that's going to make them go okay this guy gets it this girl gets it like they're thinking on the right terms like how well you're executing on it might be a different story but at least you're like if your head's in the right place that goes a long way so I'm talking way too much not at all dude not at no, all you're fine it, um, I was actually going to ask you to expand on this a little bit more, um, oh, yeah? in terms, yeah, in terms of like building a portfolio, um, you know, so, a, a, a concept artist that is looking to, or an aspiring concept artist is looking to get into this industry. Uh, mm -hmm. what should their portfolio or their art station, what should it look like? Um, are there minimum and maximums of certain things and should they always show process pictures for things like what? Like, what do art directors that are looking at portfolios want to see from a potential concept artist? Okay. I feel like getting your foot in the door is probably one of the hardest things. At least it was for me. I'm, I'm still working on getting my foot in the door. Okay. So, okay. So, um, there's a, uh, there's a 3d artist that is amazing. That's on Twitch. Um, Nimlot, Are you guys familiar with his stuff? Mm -hmm. yeah oh my gosh uh it's nimlot it's like is it 26 i, I anyway his yes. name's georgian and like he, you know so anyway he's he's amazing so he 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 takes on this is going to answer your question i'm just kind of giving a background <laughs> uh he does one after the other amazing character right mm -hmm. and, and he has a mentorship and his students like he's he's brutal to him right like he doesn't let his students show anything until it's like top quality. So there's one girl who took his mentorship. She worked on a character for a year, right? A year? A year, one character. Okay. And it's so good. Shit. Multiple studios were trying to get her. Oh, wow. It's the only thing she has on her art station, one character. What? So for, for you to go on to art station, and, um, but yeah, it's like, w but the thing is you look at this character and you're like, oh my God, this girl can do anything we want her to do. Like she is a rock star. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, I would spend a year if, if I could come up with something of that quality. And then she actually has a time-lapse of the brutal, um, process that she went through and getting the head right from her first one. You know, so you could just see it like, you know, here's a head I did. And then he would give her critique and then she'd have to start all over again. And so you'd see this progression of the heads and the head improving, improving, improving. And then um, and then it was just mind blowingly good. So anyway, that goes back to like, what do you want to have in your art station? And the answer is what you want to have in the art station is for you to impress somebody who is already professional. You want to you want to. Um, going and it sounds lame but like you want to go to a forum and say look is this is this on par with what's out there no if not what do i need to do to make it like you know at what point is this going to look like studio quality concept art you know and um what we as a studio want to want to see isn't just that you can draw well it's that like you can draw well and it looks like you could hit the ground running, you know, like it looks like research the studio that you're going to apply to basically find out what they're doing. What is their, what, what are their concept artists produced? Look at their work, match their work, then show it to them. You know what I mean? But, you know, obviously put your own spin on it. Um, and then it's better to have one piece that's awesome, like this girl's, than to have ten pieces that are mediocre. Like it's ter don't don't even have don't even have ten pieces in there with nine of them that are mediocre or eight of them or two of them. Just throw out the mediocre. Never have it. Always have your best stuff. Yeah, this is making and me ref. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I'll, I'm just saying that like 
if you don't put anything on there that you that that wouldn't be i don't know i would say that like if if you wanted to risk that if if they were to do you know um a random view of your of your of your art and you they only got to see one piece that's on your portfolio everything you put up there should be okay to be that one piece Do you know what i mean i had heard this uh talked about a different way where they were uh talking about the art directors being risk adverse so they want to make sure that the person they're hiring can do the work but they also want to make sure that they don't uh waste time by making stuff they don't like so if you put yeah. stuff on there that they don't like then they think that you're a higher risk that you don't like or that they don't that they don't like that they don't like oh gotcha yeah it could be i mean um so i've i've been i've been a part of a lot of interview processes work a lot of them and so one of the cool things about our studio and i'm sure a lot of other ones is that what they do is they you know a lot of You'll, you'll interview with different people throughout the day and then everybody gets together and they talk about you. And then almost, almost always you'll have somebody rooting for you and you'll almost always have somebody. And some voices are obviously more powerful than others. You know, you always want to impress the art director. So interview well with the art director and, um, I don't want to instruct anybody to be humble, but you know, be be open to hearing um, what it is they're looking for, and you know, give yourself a reality check of like, are you there? Or um, I've 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 talked to the art director. I've heard the art director say, um, in a couple of cases, that like, I'm with I'm with you guys. We shouldn't hire this person, but they impressed me so much um, in the review. I mean, in in my one on one with them, that uh, I asked them if they'd be willing to take an art test, which I think a lot of artists just don't want to do, or animators or effects artists or whatever. They don't they don't want to be done the disservice of being asked to do an art test. But like, if if you want a job as a figure artist and all you have are environments. You know, you should be willing to do a, an art test of of figure of a figure art. You know that sort of a thing. Mm. Anyway, just you know, I'm part of the thing. Come on, my girlfriend's coming through. Oh, no worries. That's all uh, right. Uh, well, <laughs> laundry so, time. Yeah, no, no, no problem at all. Um, so it's all good. This this kind of, that, that speaks. Well, I have so I have a follow up question uh, directly about you know, the, the person that took a year to, fin to finish their character, um, that leads me into like the next specific question though. Um, but so she took a year to develop this character and she, you know, got, she came into high demand as a result of that. Oh, sorry. Do you need to, I thought she was asking me a question. Oh, okay. No, sorry. No, 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 no she was talking to her daughter. Um, Go ahead. but you know, obviously you do, you can't take a year in a studio, you can't take a year to design, you know, any given character that you're presented totally. with. So mm -hmm. how does, how does that translate? Like if you get hired based on the one character that you've done, right. It took no, you a year I, I should answer that. that. Yeah. I didn't really fully realize that whole thing. So the, what I was saying on, on her is that like, because of her one character, she was getting offers, right. But she also knew that like, she wasn't at a pace where she could jump in and rock it with the other guys, right? Uh huh. Um, is so that was, kind of partially answering your question? Yeah. So she wasn't necessarily hired directly into like, you know, character no, like, design or whatever. She was like maybe started and with like clear, textures or something. Yeah. Yeah. And like to be clear, I mean, I think she probably, a studio recognizes talent, right? Or devotion. And so like she probably could have gotten hired. She actually, um is she, she doesn't want to work in a studio until she feels like she's really got her feet, right mm. and i think that like she's doing some other stuff for 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 money right now 
where she has a more relaxed schedule, but it's not as great a pay. However, um, uh, a buddy of mine also uh, said that he's quoting also, so I'm quoting him quoting somebody else, <laughs> that, uh, that when you do something 10 times, um, on the, t the 10th time you can do it in half the time it took you like the first time or whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Like her character that she just did, uh, of Robert Downey Jr. Which is a very good likeness. She did that one. And I, you know, just, just, a, just like a handful of days, I'm sure. Like, uh, this guy, George, and he's doing one every day, I think. And she, she did Robert Downey Jr. in like a few days. Whereas she literally worked months on this girl's face before. So what's the uh, ideal time that somebody should so, try to hit for a, a design before they try to get hired in concept? I think, okay, concept. Uh, every job's different. Uh, figure, like, if, if I were answering for the, figuring, for the figure team, which I'm not, I know, uh, like the model, like we were just looking at, I think that they, uh, in-house... I think it's something like six weeks for a character, something like that is a typical budget. So these things don't just turn around right away, right? Uh, for a, for me to do, um, there's a lot of different stuff that I do. So like I'll, I'll do some things that, that um, are expected to be done in two days. And then other things um, I'm expected to do in, you know, over the course of a sprint, depending on what it is. But um, I would say, like, are you thinking like a character, for example? Yeah, like I would say just, uh, so obviously you want a time box. That's the big thing that they want to hear about is like your time box. You, 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 if you start using the, frame, the, the phrase time boxing, they're going to love you. You can say like, okay, I, I, I gave myself, I gave myself um, uh, the morning to come up with uh, six different ideas for silhouette. Right. And like literally I've sat there with my art lead and he's drawn for me in five minutes and he's given me like, you know, four different ideas for something. So you can literally say, here's a time box of all these different, these different um, silhouettes. And then you can say I time boxed. Okay. I picked my three favorites and uh, I gave myself a uh, half a day to, um, to kind of come up with, you know, characters based on these three or whatever, you know what I mean? And then, and then once you, once you've decided, once you, you've decided on moving forward with one design with yourself or feedback from friends, um, just make it look nice and like, just be honest about like how long it took you. And then you're going to find out that you can get faster. Just like with her, how she took a year. Don't worry about making this i'd say definitely to answer your question you should shoot for um a time limit but just do a good job and then try and get something done in a realistic time and realistic uh could be like for a character crap i've like i've worked on characters where they've been really detailed um i've worked on them for a couple of weeks right but i've also done other ones where like i had to do a turnaround in a couple of days so it really varies. It really depends on the level of detail. It's really hard to just like throw out answers, even though I do it every single day, because because everything own thing and, and like most of what I do is actually uh, miscellaneous stuff right now. Like you know, like it's on a case by case basis, right? Like you're gonna spend everything is time on hero yeah, and the, characters, and, but like side like background characters, not you're not gonna spend that much time on it. Yeah, and like I've so like music boxes, right? There's there. I've done, I've done Sony music boxes or card or card backs, these loot crates. Um, a typical loot crate could take me, um, I mean, a card, like I, it could take me a week or more, right? Because of how much goes into it. And then I could, I've had one, uh, I did the Alid where you take existing assets and you just kind of, um, you piece things together. You like the Alid one that I did um, from a couple years ago was somebody did a logo. I worked it into our existing Loot Crate logo. 
uh, I threw on the texture from this magical floor that like the art director had mentioned like a, or a designer had mentioned somewhere in the notes, right? I basically got all of the information and I carefully listened to what was going into it. And then I, I just put it into the concept on the first review and he said, that's it, it's done. You know, it was like a day or two like that I put in, which is like super rare. But like it just also goes to show you how like super important is communication, like, how super important communication is. So um, if you like realizing like to because one of the things and this I'll in speaking to you about like um, self improvement mm -hmm. right like I like right now it's a well, like I I feel like I'm I am a I am a contributing member member of a well-oiled machine right uh it always hasn't been like that i've definitely have had have had my stumbling blocks over you know over the years where like i didn't realize that like i was i i remember like having a period of time where i was struggling to to do everything everybody was asking me and i was so frustrated because every time uh the art director would come around he would have he would have something more to say about it and i thought it was because he it was it, it wasn't i didn't think it was me and my art lead who he, you know he said he goes dude you have to like i remember him saying that like uh he says if if he comes around today and he he likes what he sees then like i like my words you know and the art director came around it was just like a humbling thing where i just really didn't realize that i was missing what was expected of me kind of a thing so i'm every time we have a meeting i have a goal to have something that is finished like some something that is like either finished or is like informs where the finish line is do you know what i mean mm -hmm. instead of just like you know drawing this like adding this texture or fitting in this element or whatever it is i can't remember uh, a lot of this a lot of the things that I struggled with, but there, there was a time where I had pieces that I was delivering or, or showing at concept review. And I, I didn't really think of it as, I just thought it was review time. I didn't think of it as like, this needs to be approved. You know what I mean? It was a, re a review time. I have three different tasks. This one hasn't been approved for two weeks, but these other ones, you know, have been approved and I've moved on into other tasks that have been approved. But like, I don't know. I'm I'm rambling right now, but like, I have the, you you get to the point where you have a mindset of every time you go into a meeting, you want to have something that is uh, well thought out, and there's it's not just showing that there's a pretty picture. It's like, am I problem solving to the point where it actually has value in terms of this is going to be a final product soon? Like they have a tight deadline, and I'm messing it up by not trying to solve all the problems ahead of time you know what i mean so like so like for everything you you're putting out there you want to kind of shoot for uh just that instant approval kind of design like the the whole peter jackson thing like the right yeah right yeah well yeah, yeah and like yeah and it doesn't have to be i can't remember the last time and this is this is awesome to say this. I can't remember the last time that I didn't put a lineup of something in front of my lead and art director where they didn't just pick one thing with minor changes. Because because I've really got it in my head. I've worked there for a long time too, right? Uh, but I've really got it in my head what's expected. Um and um, what I can do to uh, impress, you know, my lead and my art director, like not not just impress them, but like, what's something that that they can look at and say, yeah, that's exciting. That's something that people are going to be excited about. Like you want to make their job easier. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. Like I literally. After this talk that I, of with my lead that I was talking to you about, where um, I wasn't delivering like I thought I was, 
I had, I took a, I took a step back and I'm, and I asked, you know, I basically was like, okay, I need to, yeah, I need to, I need to think ahead way more. And I would, and it's still a habit now, I would work to have something finished to put in front of him like every time instead of like, instead of me showing him here, here's where I am on this right now. Now review time is a goal. It's not just, it's not just a, here's where I'm at. And so that, that's one of the, that's one of the realities of uh, the job. And, and I, you can think of it in terms of like, you know, when you make your art post, here's my newest update. Here's where I am today. Instead of that, it's like, okay, here's, here's where I brought it to. Like, this is, this is, what do you think of this as a final, do you, you know, do you think, what else do you think it needs? Not just like, hey, I'm halfway through rendering this jacket. What do you think? So speaking of uh, realities of the job, uh, recently we just had uh, some news come out that uh, Cyberpunk 2077 was getting delayed, and there <laughs> was not getting delayed, and instead they're uh, pumping people through crunch. It, does crunch impact uh, concept artists as well? Do you guys have like short time span or, uh, to, and you have to uh, produce additional uh, hours in a day? Or is that mostly something that uh, later on people have to deal with? Um, it depends on the studio. We have an extremely uh, organized studio. And so time crunches are pretty rare. I, can, I, can, I think I can say that without risking getting in any kind of trouble. Like there are a lot of studios out there who, uh, who tell you that time crunch is mandatory and that's a big reality. Um, and <clears throat> extra hours uh, do not make for higher quality, mm -hmm. you know? Good. So you said that. Like, I literally, I worked at a studio that's now closed. I worked on it. I worked on um, a game that became Dungeon Runners. At the time I worked on it, it was called Exarch Online. Uh, Joe Maduera was the the lead artist. He like he just we, we got him like we brought him into games in that studio. Like <clears throat> that studio was kind of formed almost around that guy. Anyway, uh, there were like nineteen of us in the studio, and um. The heck, where, where are those, like, where's I going with this? I, dude, I am like the tangent master. No Usually worries, I can man. pull it back, but uh, you were speaking to crunch time, crunch, yeah, the crunch time. So, I, I, yeah, at that studio, uh, I it was it was midnight on a Sunday night, so we had worked all day Sunday, right? Uh, we had mandatory 14 hour days, I think, and it was and it was and it was Sunday, it was Sunday midnight going into 1 a.m I'm, I'm going in you know and uh, the the president walked around and said hey guys we're going to push through till six um Hi. we're getting stakes for everybody as a thank you for your hard work and people were like dude i don't freaking care about the stakes you know uh and so but that was a studio that was in, eventually uh they, they, you know, they migrated to Texas, but, but I remember that like the studio was like, um, we worked for NCSoft and each day you finished ahead of schedule was like a $10,000 bonus or something. Right. So you didn't get paid anymore, but the studio did. So it was in their best interest to crunch. And so what had happened is you would, you would work right up until you you would you would work as hard as you could until you delivered the uh, update. Then the the studio would get some bonus, and then you would go home and you'd sleep for two days around a family that hadn't seen you, you know, in two weeks, and then you would get your next deadline goal, which was you know the next three week sprint or whatever it was, and. And after a few days, you would quickly start ramping into another crunch, you know, and that's horrible on, on employees. It's I've like, heard. you know, so like in my studio, it's like they literally plan it. Like you probably know what you're going to be working Well, not you individually probably won't know, but there's a lot of, of what is planned ahead, like, you know, months, if not year, a, a year out kind of a thing. 
like and, and if you and, look, and if you don't deliver then why it's like you know they have the whole scrum thing and like they're very well planned out and so um i'm just really happy and lucky that i work where uh crunch is extremely rare because um we know we're working at a time we can can also can out I've heard that like it. studios that crunch are generally either not managed well or they're just so big that they don't really care that they're crunching. No, you, you you can be small and also you just you have an expectation on your shoulders and you just have a finite number of people that have to deliver a quantity that's unrealistic. So I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know what there's crunches for all different reasons, but um, planning is going to take care of some of it. Manpower is going to take care of the rest of it. So as many, you know, I, I, and like, I, I can't tell you how many people work in our studio or anything. It's just like, not, it's not, uh, it's not something that like we should talk, we're supposed to talk about, you know, but like, um, but we do have a we do have a studio who is, who can outsource if we need it, you know. So outsourcing is just a it's a common thing where that's another thing. Like if you want to do concept, you know, outsource like being a part of an outsourced studio is also a, a very real thing. Massive Black was one of the earlier ones. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's one a lot thing, of them around the world. One thing that uh, I want to think about is there's like a lot of people that want to be concept artists. So there's a pool of people that are willing to do the work. And does that make it more uh, competitive to stick up with the crunch when it does present? Like, say, if you don't do this job, then somebody else out there will, and we'll hire them instead. Yeah, but I mean, don't go, don't work where you don't want to work either. You know, like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to. Okay, so I, I heard in college, and this is true today. You're not just at competition with the the people that you're in co in school with. You're in competition with all of the professionals already out there in the field, right? And and I'm in competition with. I can definitely be replaced by untold numbers of people trying to get into my position. So I have to like every day. Rem I don't have to remind myself, but like I'm I'm aware of the fact all the time that that uh, I'm in a I'm in a position that is highly valued and that um, uh, a lot of people want to be a part of, you know, they, they want to be a concept artist and I'm, I'm a concept artist at a studio that is like highly respected on a job that is like, you know, awesome. Like the content that I get to work on is fantasy. You know, I don't get sick of that. Um, it's medieval stuff and it's super creative. And um, when you think that you've you've run out of things that you can draw, like there's a, there's always more. You know, there's 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 the we've got to as long as the game does well, we're going to continue to like produce well. Like we have people who are super creative, the designers. I mean, we the music boxes are a relatively new thing. Like to me, loot crates are a relatively new thing, even though they've been out for a few years. Um, those are super creative to me. Like, you know, when the whole monetization thing came out a while ago, you know, at some point that was new. And, and again, we're coming out with, uh, new areas, like every update, you know, we're, we're revealing this, this new area with these creatures and this people and these magic abilities and whatever. So there's constantly a cool stuff. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm really, really fortunate to be where I am in the job I have. And I know that like there's 20 people standing in line to, to take the job that I have. And it's not like I have to like pass a daily test against, you know, these 20 people. It's just that I've established that I'm valuable. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to impress every studio. You have to impress the studio that you want to work for. You know, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, sorry, what's that? Uh, Ali in chat brought up a question that's a, a follow-up. And what impact does the uh, uh, applicant's style have in, on their uh, uh, 
appeal to the studio. Well, and, and specifically, um, I think it's specifically are are you know are studios looking uh, going after a look in an artist, or are they just wanting to fill a spot? No, look is huge. Um, so if you so. I've come from I've come from a position of I would get offended when I would show like not a studio but somebody like let's say a studio like a potential studio my artwork and I've shown them 10, 10 things and they go yeah but can you draw girls or whatever you know what I mean like they don't see girls in your portfolio can you draw girls I'm like dude can you not see that I can draw guys well enough that I could act do girl you know what i mean that kind of a thing so style if you have if you have 10 pieces and they're all in the same style a studio is going to think you can only do that one style right so if you interview like uh and and the thing is the sad thing is that like it might be true however if you can adapt to style that's huge if you have a style that's a good fit then that's huge if you know if you're going to work on adventure time and you have an adventure time style great you know i have a buddy who works on adventure time well he worked on it you know when they quit then they now he's on ducktales but like i have you know the, like he has he has a he has a style that trans that that he can adapt to whatever other thing like you know he was he did he did a comic book in his own style that um that uh transcended him into working in uh on adventure time and then his time on adventure time proved that he can do backgrounds and all these different formats and that you know he 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 was able to just like glide right over to DuckTales. And uh same thing goes with video games. There are a lot of games out there who are that are that are very stylized, but there are a lot of like our studio is very it's stylized, but it's stylized in like reality. It's stylized like to where you know it everything should be again plausible going back, you know. Um you should be able to uh you should be able to show us that you're designing something. I, I I used to I I draw pretty realistic stuff, and my art director. Uh, I had I had to I had a personal goal to where he would never say cartoony again. Like he he would he would look at my work and he would say, that's <laughs> ah, too cartoony, and I realized that I was just drawing with lines that were too thick. You know, like it mm -hmm. really meant something. Like he 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 wouldn't approve something because I had I needed to. I would do things as simple as shave the edges off of like a crate design or something, you know. Um, anyway, but there was one guy who I won't say who it is. But there's one guy who uh, was a very good artist. Uh, he does a lot of board game stuff, and he's very stylized, uh, cartoony influence, you know, kind of a thing. And he really wanted to work at our studio, but he had nothing that was realistic showing. And so I worked with him. I, I said, okay, I, you can't show this. Like this, this, there's nothing in your portfolio to show. You're, gonna, you're a good fit. So I worked with him and he produced like three character designs. And they're like, he wouldn't leave the cartooniness. Like he would, he would kind of bend the cartooniness, but he was trying to like have his signature style still in there. And um, I, you know, he was just like, look, this is it, man. This is what I'm turning in. And I'm like, all right. And so he applied, and then he was like, you know, he was hitting me up every day, sometimes three or four times a day. It's like, hey, have you heard anything back? I'm like, dude, they're gonna get back to you, like if you know, or they won't. If they haven't heard back, you know, it's a process. And that's that's also something that like anybody who's interested in getting into this, like, you can apply at a studio and not hear back for a month, and all of a sudden, you know, they call you up. So don't worry about it if they don't. They write back anyway. But um. He did not get the. I actually saw my art director at an event, and I said, um, "Hey, yeah, so my my buddy keeps hitting me up." And he goes, "Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, that one guy." And I go, "Yeah." And I said, "I said, I said, is it too cartoony?" He goes, "Yeah, it's too cartoony." So I just want to interject real quick uh, for people out there that have an in with a company, uh, you have a friend that is your in between. Uh, be very. Uh, infrequent with how often you bug them for updates if you bug them for updates at all because it's going to be un uncomfortable for that person to deliver the no or <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like, I, 
can I can I can speak to that from personal experience. I, I do want to yeah. just I do want to interject though, um, b- just because we we've been talking um, about this this idea that that I'm going to bring up and um, and alluding to it, but I also I feel like it's worth hammering on with uh, re- repeated questions asked in different ways, maybe, um, and it's something that Peter spoke to uh, much earlier on. Um, in, in the idea of like how to stand out, you know, and, and you've been talking about, you know, style being really important and versatility of style being important, but in terms of like that initial, like, you know, popping out of the crowd, like what are, what are the things that are really going to make you like stand apart and stand above and get noticed? Yeah. There's just so many good artists out there. It's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm and, and I really yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Sometimes I ramble, and I I really hope that I don't miss the point and like and don't no no no. Question, and I'm but, not inferring. So, I'm not inferring that by my preamble sure, sure. to that yeah. question. It's more just like let's oh, yeah, just yeah. like let's 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 spend as much time as we can on it because I think that it is really important. Oh, totally. So, um, uh, I should try and find. Dude, I wish I had these things just to go, but like there's uh, another. There's another guy on Art Station, a guy that interviewed where everybody wanted him to come work with this. It was like he wasn't. He. Everybody else. So, so different parts of the studio will interview the person, right? Like uh, anything, any, anybody that he might have some kind of design, uh, you know, figure, whatever, character artist, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so there was this one kid who who interviewed with this. I think he was fresh from school. And um, nobody was really impressed with him, but the concept artists were blown away by him because he was doing stuff that we hadn't seen before. And everybody was like, I know we're looking for a senior artist position. They're trying to fill a senior artist role, but this guy, this guy is, you know, thinking like, you know what I mean? That kind of a thing. Yeah. And so I, I, and I'm trying to remember what it was you did, but like, I think, and he was also very stylized. He was very Miyazaki, Mm. you know? Interesting. Um, But he, but he was doing stuff where I think he was, if I remember right, and I'm probably not, but I think he was, um, building off of a lot of um like organic stuff like he would take foliage and he would and he would like reimagine it as an animal or you know or i think that's what it was it was something like um like a tree became part of uh became part of an engineering thing like what if what if a tree were also um a part of a pulley system where it wasn't like you're just using a pulley thrown over a limb, but like the tree was part of the system. You know what I mean? It was like, it was like nature and, and, uh, and industry were truly merged, you know, Mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. It was something like that. It was just so freaking cool. So it's it's kind of speaks to this. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. It was exciting. That's the Uh thing is like, you know, we were all like excited because I'm like, Oh my God, this guy's, this guy is thinking is so fun. It's so fresh. Even though this has nothing to do with what we're doing, I want to work with this guy because he's going to bring good ideas. You know what I mean? So uh, there's a... Hopefully I can answer your question this way. It's It kind of goes in line with um, finding your personal style. If uh-huh. you... I've heard I've heard a couple of different answers to this, and you can tell me what you think. Um, one of them is um, when you're trying to find your own personal style, think of your think of your uh, two or three favorite artists out there. Like if if all of your if all of their artists had to disappear and you had to pick two or three, you know, who would they be? And then merge that. That's such a hard question. <laughs> and then you know, no, but yeah, like you know, who who are the who are the artists that blow you away? Mm-hmm. And then how can you infuse that into you? You know what I mean? Like, 
um, I actually, I, uh, and then there's, and then the other one is, um, uh, if you, if you take 10 artists, you know, if you, if you copy one artist, you're going to be a clone. There are so many people out there who paint exactly like JC Lion Decker or, um, Ro uh, um, what's his name? Arthur, Arthur Rackham's the guy that like actually was compared to, but Norman Rockwell, there's so many Norman Rockwell clones out there, you know? Um, and he hated that. He actually, he taught, he taught a uh, class for like a year. And he said, all I've been able to do is successfully produce a lot of clones. Oh. And he hated it. Mm -hmm. And he said, and, and they were really good painters. Like, you know, people were like um, amazed by like what, like the, the, the quality of students he produced, but, you know, they were already really good students, but they just wanted to be like him. So there are a lot of artists out there who clone other artists and you're never going to be unique. You're going to be a, you're going to be a cheap imitation of the truly awesome artist. But if you take two artists or more and somebody was saying up to 10, right? What what do you love about this artist? What do you love about Miyazaki combined with Norman Rockwell combined with whoever? Three artists, right? You're going to have something that's completely unique, uh, to, and you're going to make that your own. So that's that. And that's speaking in terms of style, right? I did a concept uh, that didn't make it. I can't remember why, but uh, I did a mount design. That's still my favorite thing I've done at Zenimax that'll never be seen. And it was, um, you remember, you know, that zombie game, um, uh, what's the one, the really good story? Last of Us. Last of Us, where people are basically mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. The cordyceps. A cordyceps, yeah. So I did a I did a horse that was kind of like that, right? Like it was, but it was with coral, mm -hmm. and um, and like it wasn't just that coral was coming off of the thing. Like I've done a lot of coral stuff off of like crabs in our game and stuff like that, but I did these mounts where basically it really wrecked their silhouette in the coolest way possible. Like, you know, the face, the geometry was affected to the point where it was horse-like, but it was a totally different creature, you know, as a result. But it was just merging coral and horse, you know? So, um, and it was literally, like, if you look at the Last of Us concept art, they took you'll see you'll see the same i think they even take photos don't they where they'll photo bash like cordyceps onto a dude screaming or maybe it's a concept of a guy screaming but then you'll see the same guy screaming like you know a lineup of them and then different cut types of cordycep mushrooms on them um and extremes you know big medium small like we were talking about earlier um and it's the same thing like if if you want to stand out like try introducing you know different elements that are just unique like that are bizarro or something you don't think anybody has ever thought about like we have a dragon frog in our i got to be a part of that was super fun you know like it's just a dragon and a frog it's a frog with bat wings <laughs> um yeah so, so real quick uh you brought, yeah. on a, brought up a uh bash photo bashing a few years ago, there was a a talk at I think it was GDC, and the topic was mm -hmm. concept art is dead. Uh, obviously, it isn't because you still have a job. But uh, <laughs> to what extent does uh, photo bashing uh, have in your um, designing? I don't ever really use it. I have used it in the past um, a little bit. I think that there was a big. I think there's there's definitely still a lot of it happening all the time, and guys are really good at it. And I think it's also it can be kind of a necessary. Um, but I don't ever really use it. Um, the only photo bashing I do really is um, all like again music box. I'll design a music box, uh, and then I'll take a fancy wood grain, you know, and I'll just slap it on there, and then I'll put a multiply layer on it. 
that sort of a thing and then edit it down but it's like to inform the next guy this is what you build you know and here's the and here's the wood grain photo that i got from textures.com you know so you can actually use this so all of that stuff is valuable and then we it's will also what's that it's just yeah another it's another tool in the toolbox yeah. yeah and there's a lot of that stuff where like and i you know there's a lot of there's a lot of um looking down your nose at this in art or that you know mm-hmm. illustrators are real artists fine artists are am i muted no oh no so like yeah and and uh and you know some artists look down on fine artists as like you know lazy or you know like you know fantasy like they get to they get to take forever to do this one thing they you know i really have um i don't get impressed by things that i can do without thinking and and for me and what what i mean by that is like i get shown a lot of drawings from up and coming artists of another guy who drew a girl who who's drawn Robert Downey Jr. or, or Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, because they love, you know, whatever celebrity. Isn't this a really good drawing of this celebrity? I'm like, yeah, they're, this is really good practice. This is, you know, my niece is doing this kind of stuff right now, for example. She's drawing a lot of celebrities. And, and she's getting really good. Uh, but when, when all of a sudden, like, um, you know, my Facebook is filled up with reference to like some, some guy who does these wall sized girls with plastic over their faces, <laughs> you know, how photorealistic it looks. I'm like, yeah, it's because he's, he's taking a photo and he's drawing it. He's just drawing it on a big scale and people mm-hmm. are blown away by it. I'm like, Oh my gosh, can you believe how good it is? I'm like, mm, yeah, I can believe it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, I don't get, I don't get, I don't. And the thing is, is I'm not trying to take away from the fact that it's good. Like it's a skill. Like that's the thing is that like, that's part of, that's one of those foundation things. Like you should be like, there are some, there are some characters on my screen right now that I freaking love and I want to paint them or draw them, you know, and like, it's great study and everything. And so, I, my, in my brain, uh, if I copy that, uh, that's, that's fun, but like, it's not, I, I just copied a photo, you know, I didn't really come up with something new. However, um, and I'm, and let me say that like, that's with a caveat that like, uh, you have guys like, um, oh, I can't think of it. So if you there's there's a there's a painter and he only paints from life and only paints from or or photos right richard schmidt and he's one of the absolute freaking best artists out there but he's not just copying a photo he's like saying something even though he says like so he he did a he did a painting of this fallen tree in a in a forest and it was like he was he was he did a portrait of a tree basically Oh, he dropped out again. He, yeah, he, 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 sh- he, 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 uh, he was telling the story of what he's seeing with his eyes. You know what I mean? So it, and it was a gorgeous, it was a gorgeous portrait of a fallen tree. Like, uh, if it was just a photo and he'd copied it letter, but you know, to the letter, it would have been boring, but like the way he painted it, it was a it was a portrait of a tree of a fallen tree and it was like one of the most gorgeous things out there and like i wish i could do that i can do it to some degree but i i you know what i mean so like that's when you get artistry in it um i'm off on a tangent again Dang. that that reminds me of um you remember like you remember a couple months ago when we all got those mag- uh critiques from the magic the gathering artist oh yeah and yeah. they brought up using their photo references yeah. to mm-hmm. not really I got copy. buddies that work on that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But like it informs their lighting, like, mm-hmm. it Oh yeah. Looks so much better. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. If you don't use reference, then it's everything doesn't matter how good you are. Really. It's going to look kind of pro- stylized. Yeah. Not, yeah. Maybe not cartoonish, but stylized. Or that James. Yeah. Guy I have a book, buddy. Uh, imaginative realism where he goes into his whole process of. Oh yeah. Maquettes I love and, that book. and stuff like that. 
Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Can I, can I jump back real quick bef- just before we run out of time? I, I want to jump back to that idea yeah, of standing yeah, sure. out again. Um, okay. And this, you know, so the, one of the big takeaways that I gathered from that, from what you were saying is, you know, like have like really standout ideas, you know, like have like really like eye catching, wowing ideas. But now like as somebody that kind of struggles with that on a personal oh, level, yeah. I- um, you know, in terms of like not always kind of feeling like I- I'm falling into generic defaults, you know, uh, is that something that you can learn? Like, is there, is that a, is that a learnable skill to have, wowing ideas or is it just like some people have that and some people don't i think you can totally learn it yeah i would say what are what are some things that you would recommend people do to sharpen that skill so i think a lot of it is um and yeah and again this is one of those where i just i i know that i'm not really answering it like satisfactorily but um all right because I think that another, you know, a lot, there are a lot of other things also that like are really valuable of standing out. And like, obviously one is like showing that you, like proving to them that you're, that you're, that you put in the work. We, we've had a couple people come in and they've had piece after piece after piece of just like mind blowingly good, like incredibly detailed pieces, you know, like fully realized worlds, that kind of a thing. So there's that. But yeah. Um, I would say that, like, to answer that one, um, there is, uh, I think, a lot of a lot of creativity that you don't realize that you have um, hasn't manifested itself because you haven't um, you haven't kickstarted your your brain in that avenue. Like, so basically, like with with me talking about the horses and the and the and the cordyceps and the the coral or whatever like that morning you could i could you could have asked me to draw a horse you know based in this one world with like different mushrooms or whatever or coral and and i could have taken a month and it wouldn't have been that cool but the fact that i had a photo and i just bashed it on you know again it's photo bashing but it's like it was it was it was a, a different way of attacking the the problem you know literally bashing something together like ask yourself um okay i've i'm not going to bang my head against the wall on trying to redraw something else literally one of my favorite um designs that i've done was when i was showing somebody how like a concept artist i actually did a, a concept that i don't typically do and it was one of my favorite things that i had done and i i had given an example of uh the um that guy who turns up in judge dread there's the guy who like has the rage <laughs> thing like he uh, he would yeah. he would he would turn he would click up his rage and it would go nuts he had this baby giant mechanical arm yeah baby brother and he had this giant mechanical arm right and and uh and um i remember that simon bisley did this amazing take on him and i'm like so what if i had to reinvent that guy right and so, and I hadn't planned it. And I said, okay, so like, let's just reinvent him. And so I just got on Google and I just did um, robot arms. And so I, I just did this mechanical study and, it, and, and I, I don't mean to like devolve into photo bashing. I'm just saying that like, this is a completely different angle that I normally would have taken. And what I did though, is I, I, I went and I did this search for auto, robot arms and there were all these really boring giant you know, like those car manufacturing robot arm things. But I found a lot of like random cables and um, other kind of machinery. And I just took it and I, I took something that looked kind of like an arm, but it wasn't really right. It had an, an extra joint or something in it. And I, I flipped it around upside down or something. And the extra joint looked so freaking cool and unique. And I kind of pulled it across his chest or something. It didn't bend like a normal elbow, but it was so freaking cool. And I just, I simplified it down to a silhouette. And and I and if I had if I had a week, I couldn't have drawn something that cool, you know. So I think ref that it comes down to like finding something really unique. Um, it's contrasting, right? It's it's um, it's uh. 
it's like what? that Tony Robbins thing where like he's he, you'll ha- you have a guy who who's had a problem his whole life and he like I'm not trying to build up Tony Robbins or whatever but like you know he does okay. you know he's like one of these guys that changes people's lives like instantly it's basically like he gets you out of your normal way of thinking it's like the shock wake up call i think he like heard some guy of lifelong stuttering like immediately you know because he got him to stop thinking on this like bs one way train of thought and yeah. uh like, and, and and it's just like art it like you can you can wake yourself up you don't realize how creative you can be it's i and i find that out day to day like i i'll, I'll like i'll I'll throw something in there and I'm like, oh my God. It's just like seeing something in the clouds. My buddy Joe uh took a picture um of these, I think it was clouds, and he said, What do you see in this? And and his son Max is like, I see an angel, like like kind of a upside like kind of upside down. And he's like, What do you mean? And he drew it and it was like this freaking crazy in perspective angel that was like <laughs> I think it was an angel, but you know, it was like some crazy figure like coming in out at, at him or whatever. And I'm like, Oh my God, like I couldn't have drawn that like from my head. And he goes, yeah, I know. But like, mm-hmm. you can see it in the clouds, you know, how clouds work. Yeah, Every time right. I look at clouds, it's a rabbit or something, but it's like a 2d thing. But this kid is, was seeing it in perspective, mm-hmm. you know, with like overlapping shapes and everything. So, you know, you're still the- human. You observe, but there's a uh, related uh, GDC video. It's called. Uh, it's on Doom. Uh, it's a, the the making of the music of the, the 2016 Doom, and hmm. the the crux of it was change the process, change the result. So yeah. by you uh, using yep. um, 3D to uh, sorry, not 3D, but uh, photo bashing, you're able to come up with something new, unique. And similarly, uh, Paul Richards, who's a concept artist that was on Project Titan and was one of Joby's uh, workshop instructors. He will introduce limits to uh, to his designs from the start. So he'll give them like mm-hmm. bounding boxes or something, so that every time yeah. you design something, it's different from because otherwise, if you follow the same process with from the same starting pot, you're going to get very similar results. He'll also yeah, see, like, he'll also right. recommend breaking it, like intentionally taking the thing that you're working with and smashing Break it into it. bits in like whatever. Yeah. whatever that might yeah, mean but but peter i think you were going to interject something please yeah i can expand on that a little like yeah some of my most uh successful i guess uh designs and images were where uh i took the the concept of something like um like elves right um i don't like the fact that they're just people with pointy ears so i took that idea and i kind of you want to kind of flip it on its head and you want to challenge what people expect of a certain certain pre-established concept. Like everyone knows what an elf is, but then if you kind of break it down to what it is, like the essence of it, but then you give it a different visual design that still kind of links back to that original concept, then people will will seem to enjoy it more like um, I did a read. I'm basically doing redesigns of these Dungeons and Dragons races, where I take the elements that I don't like of them mm-hmm. out, and I just kind of redesign it to where to what I think it should be. So I did these elves, and then I I renamed them to the Eld with a D, and they look kind of like tall, skinny, rabbit-looking things with floppy ears, and and people. At first, they didn't really like that they that I was calling them elves, but I was basing the design off of the idea that they're this super ancient race that are kind of graceful and they use bows. So I think if you can take a concept and distill it down to what the essence of it is and then throw out all the preconceived visual ideas, right, and then you just work, build it back up, then mm-hmm. I think you can be like successful with trying to generate new ideas, right? Because that that was your original question, right? Trying to find out how to uh, come up with new ideas. We're, get, we're getting better with, at it, yeah. Yeah, and I've done this with a couple of different things. Like it's just challenging the expectations that people have already. Hundred um, yeah. percent. I think I think another example 
that I can think of would be that that void dragon that I drew. And it's like everyone knows what a traditional dragon is. Um, mm -hmm. But then you just but then you kind of challenge that it's still I think it still looks like a dragon, but it's it's obviously pretty unique from from uh, from like just a, a fantasy point of view. Maybe it's not yeah. really fantasy. Maybe it's a bit of sci-fi, but you know, like, like I think that was one of my more successful designs that's been out I'll there. I'll see your art. Yeah, I feel bad. I don't yeah. know your stuff. But yeah, no, like you're describing like 100% like how I've gone about like my whole start of my career. Like when I, the first thing I ever did for for Dragon Magazine, uh, were elves, and they I hate like I actually resisted. Um, <laughs> even and they're the official elf like these are elves you know D and D for D and D, and I did uh, I did elves and they were so stylized I kind of like cringe when I look at them now but like the art director really liked it, you know he actually um he he even wrote a a man of like what do you call it like you know when people like i had a website when people when people did that where you'd have people uh speak up for you like a little a little insert like from different people you've worked with a testimonial um yeah i'll have to check out your oh you talked about those well you guys but yeah, yeah um they were I, super stylized i don't want to i don't want to cut anybody off um but we are um coming up a awesome. little bit past two That's hours fun. um but i don't i don't want to make a super hard cut because i like to leave it leave the last word to you guys so what i would like you to do is just like real quickly tell us something that you're excited about now what's something it doesn't have to be something that you're working on it can just be something going on in the world that you're aware of that you're really stoked on peter why don't you go first uh really stoked that mike morham uh the ex-blizzard ceo is starting up a new studio and oh. i'm kind of <laughs> psyching myself up to apply for their concept art position because they have a concept art position and you I, I think it's very rare to see just the straight up oh we're looking for concept artists now it's like all the other studios i've been looking at and it's like oh we need a senior concept artist we need a senior character guy we need or just no concept at all so but yeah dreamhaven studios um that's why i was asking you guys to help me per uh purge my portfolio a couple of days ago because right. i want to get it ready to apply awesome mike how about you um i would say that like right now the, the one thing i can think of because i, I, I kind of drew a blank but uh the one thing i can think of is like uh i'm rediscovering my love of 3d and um uh i'm I'm actually, this sounds kind of bizarro, but um, I'm excited about making a, one of those foam, like helmets. I've designed, like uh, taken a concept, my, my ability to do concept and uh, doing cosplay kind of a thing. But I've actually concepted a, a, a helmet for my daughter for Halloween, which I don't know if I'm going to get done in time, mm -hmm. but I've, I've modeled it out and I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, print it out of Pepecura and like make some foam and like, and, and see if I can't fully realize it. So I'm kind of pumped about that. Yeah. I've been wanting to jump back into 3d also. Cause uh, yeah, I started off doing 3d. Um, at yeah, school. yeah. They pushed everyone to do 3d and, and uh, it's like sculpting and ZBrush and yeah. Yeah. 3d. 3d is awesome um all right you guys thank you so so much um thanks for having us moose yeah, thanks, do, do you want to add anything about next week or can i just like uh can we end it there what do you think well, i can just add in re next, real quick next week uh we're gonna be having uh the vice president of marketing for dungeons and dragons joining us uh it sounds impressive but to me he's just a friend known as brian <laughs> so uh, Those guys are we, super humble about their jobs. Always, yeah. I've noticed. Anyway, yeah, he's uh, he was on the uh, Magic the Gathering side until recently, but now he's working with Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, he's told us that he cannot talk about future upcoming projects, but we can uh, hopefully get some more marketing knowledge out of him. 
Um, I do want to thank again Mike and Peter for joining us. And mm -hmm. Mike, I'm going to put some words into your mouth real quick. You're also super excited about the wor work your daughter is doing because she's a great artist. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm going to link her in chat. Yeah, definitely do that. And speaking of chat, uh, you guys are always a huge part of this. I always like to apologize for you know not being able to get you guys into future recordings because it's always so much valuable input. But thank you so much for being here and being part of this. I'm going to say. Goodbye and, and end the recording and thanks guys. Talk talk to you guys real soon.